Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Lauren, also known as Lauren Budgets, and today we are talking home buying. But first, let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room. Me. Hi, you guys, and I just want to introduce myself again. My name is Lauren, and I am now facing the camera. This is my very first time. I have made it a year on YouTube, and I decided that now would be the perfect time to go ahead and try to expand my channel, and this is the first step by facing the camera. It's going to open up a lot more possibilities for me um, on this channel, and hopefully you guys will enjoy it moving forward um, and stay with me on this journey. So jumping into the questions, we are going to be talking about um, home buying and this video is in collaboration with Jasmine over on Budget Treasures. Um, she just recently built her home um, last year and moved in this year. Um, from scratch, she's, she bought a brand new home in California and I purchased my home in the beginning of this year in January um, in South Florida. So she is going to be talking about pre um I'm talking about pre-loved and she is going to be talking about brand new built from the bottom up home in California and mine in South Florida, pre-loved. So the first question I'm going to be answering is what's a good starter amount to have when purchasing a home? So for this varies on so many things, the type of loan you're getting, um, your credit score, your budget, the price of the home. Um, your debt to income ratio, like there are so many factors. So I would say in general, the lowest amount that you can have for your down payment is 3.5%. I believe both FHA and conventional, although conventional your credit score does have to be a bit higher. Um, you also wanna have, they say generally you want to estimate about 10% of the total purchase price for your closing costs. So you definitely wanna make sure you have that along with any of the little fees that come in between. Um, for us, we had to pay for an inspection, we had HOA fees, and then the HOA, they wanted us to pay our dues for a full year up front, so that was another expense that we weren't um, expecting to pay, but we were able to pay because we were saving and we had the money off to the side. Um, and then once we started the process, of course, we were able to adjust our budget a little bit once we knew that the you know certain costs were coming up for us to spend. So you always wanna make sure that you have at least enough for your down payment, um, which is I believe 3.5% at minimum of the total purchase price and closing costs, which is another 10% of the purchase price. And I would say have an additional at least three to 4,000 um, for anything that comes up. So for us, we had our earnest money, we had our, int we had our um, inspection, we had our HOA application fee, our HOA dues, we had our closing costs, we had to pay once for an extension because that was on our end where we needed an extension. So all of those fees come in. In general, we had about $32,000 saved up together um, once we started the process. And then as we, you know, as the process went on, um, we ended up saving more because we knew we realized that this is going to be just a little bit more expensive than people make it out to be. So we had about 32,000 saved up. We did not use the whole 32,000 just to purchase the home. I want to make that clear. Um, we used about half to be honest. I, I live in South Florida. Cost of living is very high. Homes are very high. And as most of you know, it is a seller's market right now. So prices are pretty high and negotiating is not really in <laughs> it's not really there it's if you if you get to negotiate with your sellers you're I consider yourself extremely lucky and definitely don't take advantage of it but definitely use it to your advantage um, the next question that I got is how long is the process from thinking of buying a home to actually getting the keys um, so from thinking of buying a home and not have actually started anything, it took us about three years. Um, from the time that I started saving for the home to actually getting the keys, my boyfriend and I, um, I say me because he's he's always had a job. I was a stay-at-home mom before. Um, I had only been working about a year or so um, before I started saving and I wasn't saving much at all. So I would say it took us about a year and a half from the time we started saving to the time we got the keys. Um, from the time that we started looking, I say October, 
November, December, January, it took us three months. From the time we started looking to the time we got the keys, it was three months, All right, a little less than three months. So a year and a, three years from when we thought about it, a year and a half from when we started, um, you know, putting our plan into action, which was saving and making making the sacrifices that we needed to make in order to save as much as we can in the shortest amount of time possible, and three months from the time we started looking to the time we closed on our home. Um, one thing I would say is you you one thing I would say is you're going to have to make sacrifices if you want to get there in a decent amount of time, depending on your finances. I'm, I'm going to assume, because most of us are budgeting, we do have debt, we have, you know, we're average workers, we don't, we're not rich. Um, so we made sacrifices. We both lived at home, so we didn't have like a rent or anything like that we needed to pay. We just had like household bills. And then of course, any bills that we had, I did have quite a bit of credit card debt when I first started. Um, but I was focusing on that in the beginning. I was literally paying it off any, as much as I can in addition to saving. Um, so yeah, it took us a year and a half from the time I started saving, three months until we got, from the time we started looking at homes and got the keys to our home. So the next question that I got is a really good question. It was how did I continue to cash stuff in the process? Because as a lot of you know, um, they do question everything. They question everything. It's like, this is my money. <laughs> Why are you questioning? This is mine. But yeah, they do question everything. And I, one thing I would say is I was not cash stuffing as much, like such a large amount back then as I am now for that reason. My, I was saving way more um, just for my general home savings and that stayed in my bank account. I did not take it out to stuff it or anything. I was using prop money. If you go back into my videos, you noticed I was using prop money in my savings videos or I just wouldn't mention it at all um, because I wasn't stuffing it. It was simply in my bank account so they can see it. The reason why is because your money has to have been seasoned for 60 days um, and you need to have proof where it came from. So I didn't want to be withdrawing the money and then depositing it back because then I would have, they wouldn't count it towards, you know, what I had available. So, um, so as long as it came from my paycheck, which it did, I left it in my bank account and they didn't question it. Um, he did question in the beginning, <laughs> probably the first two times that I pulled out cash um, it, on payday. And he was like, what, where is this money going? And I was honest, I told him that I just use it for some personal savings that I have off to the side. And so he knew from there, he just told me as long as the amount did not go up, um, then th it was okay. Because you always want to make sure that you have that money sitting in the bank. You want to be, it to be accounted for anytime they check and they will check randomly whenever they feel like it. So I was not cash stuffing as much as I was back then as I am now. Um, my gas, my groceries and my spending, I was doing it on my credit card. I was just paying my credit card off at the end of the, um, the end of the, at the end of the billing period or I'm just paid off right away. Whatever the case may be, I never carried a balance in order to not touch my credit score. You know what I mean? Another question that I got was, should you what what do you think is best to do first? Furnishing, cleaning, or renovating? For me, personally, renovating and cleaning was the first things that we did. Uh, cleaning would have been the first thing that we did, but you know my boyfriend, if you've been around for a while, he was determined to remove those popcorn ceilings before he moved in, so we did partial renovating. Um, it was just removing the popcorn ceilings. It ended up taking a little bit longer than he had anticipated. It was not such an easy job as people made it seem, so I did have to end up hiring a company to come out and remove them, whatever he didn't remove, because uh, he was making quite a, quite a mess, so I did have a lot of cleaning, but definitely I would say if you are going to run you want to try to renovate if you have if you are able to if you have the funds if you have the availability to not move in right away try to renovate before you move in that's what everyone suggested to us um, because it's a lot easier to renovate when you're not living in the home it you can't use everything that you when you want to use it you can't use any everything how you want to use it it's a mess people are in and out of your home all the time it's just inconvenient to be renovating while you're living in the home but if you don't have a choice, I would say before you move in, 
clean, clean, clean. Whether it is brand new, built from the ground up, or pre-loved, you wanna make sure you clean and you clean really well because you don't know what's been done in your home, you don't know who's been in your home, you don't know where they came from before they came into your home. So you definitely wanna make sure you clean. That was what I, was my main focus after we got the ceilings taken care of, especially since my boyfriend had made quite a mess with the popcorn all over the home. So um, renovating and cleaning are number one. Furnishing you can slowly do. Um, I mentioned it in my videos that I have not really furnished our home. You see this little corner here, but that's because this is where I work. So I have like a little setup, um, you know, that they see um, on our Zoom meetings. But yeah, you furnishing can be done. And especially now with COVID, everything is so backed up. I mean, we are in almost the end of July and we still don't have our couch and we ordered a couch in January. So, I mean, just take it as you may. Furnishing can be done as time goes on. We started with nothing, we moved with nothing, um, and slowly but surely we're, we're slowly buying things. Um, and, you know, we're just taking it as it is. Furnishing can be done at any time, especially if you're on a tight budget. You Furnishing is not really you want to buy the necessities. I mean, we bought a mattress and we bought a bed frame, so we're not sleeping on the floor because we were sleeping on the floor for a couple weeks. Um, but that was like our priority. So we were sleeping off of the floor now, but we don't have like a bed, like an actual bed frame um, or anything like that. We're, we bought an adjustable bed. So we have a frame, but not like a headboard or anything like that. Um, so yeah. I would definitely say cleaning is number one. Cleaning is the most important. Renovating and furnishing, they can come um, later if you don't have the funds for it, if you not budget for it, if you do not save for it, or whatever the case is. Those can always come later, but cleaning is number one, always. So yeah, um, and then just a word of advice for um, anyone looking to purchase a home. If you have student loans, please don't let that deter you from trying to get a home. I had student loans and now things are changing. Whether you're on FHA or conventional, they are now only taking 0.5% of your student loan balance as a payment if you have a $0 payment, which I did because of the forbearance. So they took 0.5% of my payment, which really helped us, um, you know, with our debt to income ratio. Debt to income ratio is the main thing that they focus on. So for us, we had to get a lot of extensions because um, we could not get an insurance company to cover us because of the pipes that needed to be redone. So that is what why it took us just a little bit longer to close on our home was because the insurance in the insurance um aspect of it but yeah you always want to make sure you have money don't go into it thinking like oh i have this exact amount of money and this is exactly how much i need because so many unexpected expenses can come up if you need an extension you have to pay for an extension if you want to pay to get a lower interest rate even though interest rates are like extremely low right now um you know you have to pay for that so make sure that you have a decent amount of money saved up um, so you're comfortable and you're not like stressing yourself out throughout this process it is a very stressful process there were many many times my boyfriend and I got into arguments because he's like oh I'm over it and I'm like listen like we've already came this far I know it's like a little stressful right now but let's just you know keep walking down the path and we're gonna get there you're gonna get there eventually just keep saving um, and like any little bit counts, like $5 a week, $5 every two weeks, it'll add up. If you're going to be saving for three years, $5 a week here and there, or $5, you know, saving to out your change every time you go out and buy something or whatever the case is, just save. Just continue saving. And even while you're in the process, keep saving because you're going to need it. So many things are going to come up. Everyone has told us. And it's so true. It's like never ending when you own a home. There's always something to do. So definitely make sure you save up your money. I believe that's all I've got to... I believe that's it. I'm just trying to think about everything that we went through or dealt with or whatever the case may be. But I think that's it. So if you guys have any other questions, just leave them down below in the description box. I will see you guys actually tomorrow for my cash stuffing. Well, you won't see my face tomorrow, but you'll see my hands like you normally do um, for my cash stuffing. Um, and I'm also going to be doing a giveaway. I'm going to do a giveaway because I've been on YouTube for one full year and you guys have held me 
accountable for everything that I am doing. I, I promise you I am more disciplined now than I was before because I know that I'm going to have to answer to you guys coming that every week. So thank you guys so much for checking in. I hope you guys are not disappointed by my video and I hope you stick with me through my expanding of the channel here. We are still going to keep going with Finance Fridays with my cash stuffing of my paychecks and anything that I have any extra income that I choose to share. Um, I did stop sharing my YouTube income because because that is mostly going towards debt and uh, my car note so for now because I did just purchase a new car. So yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow um, for my fourth cash stuffing of July. Don't forget there is a giveaway, so um, stay tuned for that. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.